Good afternoon. Our entrance antiphon. Let my mouth be filled with your praise that I may sing aloud. My lips shall shout for joy when I sing to you. Hallelujah. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God the Father, and the unity of the Holy Spirit be with you all. As we prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries, we call to mind our need for God's mercy. You came to call sinners, Lord have mercy. You came to heal the contrite, Christ have mercy. You plead for us at the right hand of the Father, Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, who chose the mother of your Son to be our mother also, grant us that persevering in penance and prayer for the salvation of the world, we may furthermore effectively each day the reign of Christ who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit one God forever and ever amen A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Some who had come down from Judea were instructing the brothers, unless you are circumcised according to the Mosaic practice, you cannot be saved. Because there arose no little dissension and debate by Paul and Barnabas with them, it was decided that Paul, Barnabas, and some of the others should go up to Jerusalem to the apostles and presbyters about this question. They were sent on their journey by the church and passed through Phoenicia and Samaria, telling of the conversation of the Gentiles and brought great joy to all the brethren. When they arrived in Jerusalem, they were welcomed by the church as well as by the apostles and the presbyters, and then reported what God had done with them. But some from the party of the Pharisees who had become believers stood up and said, it is necessary to circumcise them and direct them to observe the Mosaic law. The apostles and the presbyters met together to see about this matter. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Let us go rejoicing to the house of the Lord. Let us go rejoicing to the house of the Lord. I rejoice because they said to me, we will go up to the house of the Lord and now we have set foot within your gates, O Jerusalem. Let us go rejoicing to the house of the Lord. Jerusalem built as a city with compact unity. To it the tribes go up, the tribes of the Lord. Let us go rejoicing to the house of the Lord. According to the decree of Israel, to give thanks to the name of the Lord, in it are set up judgment seats, seats for the house of David. Let us go rejoicing to the house of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John the Evangelist. Jesus said to his disciples, I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine grower. He takes away every branch in me that does not bear fruit, and every one that does he prunes so that it bears more fruit. You are already pruned because of the word that I spoke to you. Remain in me as I remain in you. Just as a branch cannot bear fruit on its own unless it remains on the vine, so neither can you unless you remain in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever remains in me and I in him will bear much fruit, because without me you can do nothing. Anyone who does not remain in me will be thrown out like a branch and wither. 
People will gather them and throw them into a fire, and they will be burned. If you remain in me and my word remain in you, ask for whatever you want, it will, and it will be done for you. By this is my Father glorified that you bear much fruit and become my disciple. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. As we continue in the Acts of the Apostles, we begin now to see the beginnings of a controversy in the early church that really changed the history of the whole church. We know, of course, how this controversy was decided. But the point was that there were these people called Judaizers. They were trying to make the point that if someone wanted to follow Christ, they had to observe the law of Moses and all that that entails. Remember that there are 613 laws of Moses governing everything about what you can eat, how you wash your hands, what day you do certain things on, all of these very complicated laws that the Pharisees followed and expected everyone else to follow to the letter. But the point was that Jesus Christ freed us from all of that. On one occasion he said, it is not what goes into a person that makes him unclean, it is what comes out. Lying and sensuousness and evil talk and all of these things this is what renders a person evil. It's what comes out of his mouth, not what goes in. And by saying this, Jesus made all foods clean. Now that, of course, was an interpretation given. Was it at the time taken as that interpretation, or was it later when the gospel was actually written? We don't know. We certainly know that the events that we are reading about certainly made it so, because you and I don't have to observe kosher. There are no prohibitions on what we eat except the sacrifice of Lent on a Friday. But that doesn't mean that meat is unclean. It simply means we sacrifice the eating of meat on a Friday in Lent as a means of joining ourselves to the sacrifice of Christ. It doesn't mean there's anything particularly wrong with meat itself of whatever kind. And so this is the question that they were facing in those days. And thanks be to God, it was decided with the help of the Holy Spirit in the way that it was. And so Paul and Barnabas go out and they made many disciples on their journey. But what are we going to do with all these disciples? Do we force them to be Jews, or do we simply recognize that they are brothers and sisters of the Lord Jesus, equally able to call God Father as we are, equally a part of God's covenant and God's love as any Jewish person would be? Are they not all of that? And so they brought great joy to the brothers and sisters about the conversion of the Gentiles. The question remains is what to do about it. And we will see that how that developed as the days continue in the Acts of the Apostles as we continue to read these very things. So Jesus in his continuing discourse that we are reading in now in the 15th chapter speaks about the fact that we are in that image of the vine and the branch. We know how we go out in the, after the harvest and prune the branches of the vines, taking off the unfruitful ones and keeping the ones that will grow. And the point was, is that we are people who bear fruit. We are branches on the vine of Christ. And we bear fruit because we take off what does not bear fruit. We take off selfishness and temptations and we take off the things that are not of God. And we bear much fruit because of this. And this is the image that he developed. An image that is again agrarian. 
something familiar to the people of the time and certainly something, something familiar to people in our own state, especially in the Finger Lakes, but an image that we can apply to ourselves. The Father is glorified by our bearing much fruit and becoming the disciples of his Son, Jesus Christ. So we pray for all those who bear much fruit in our own day, those who strive to care for those who are sick, those who strive to find a cure and prevention of the coronavirus, those who have done so much to keep our world functioning as best it can in spite of everything. And we pray that soon we'll be able to return to the practice of our faith in its fullness around the altar of God. Until then, we patiently await day after day through the intercession of Mary, asking that God will hear our prayers and intentions through her. Today marks the first day of the six apparitions of Mary from May to October 13th in 1917. And so through Mary, we come before the Lord with grateful hearts asking that God fulfills these, our intentions. As we pray, first of all, for the leadership of our church throughout the world, our Holy Father, Pope Francis, our Bishop, Salvatore, and Matthew, for all men and women who serve the people of God all over the world, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for those of our parish family who need our prayers, those who are in hospitals and nursing homes, those who have lost their loved ones in death, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for religious vocation, that our young people will hear and answer with generous heart the call of the Holy Spirit, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for our faithfully parted, especially for the repose of the soul of Herbert Peck, whom we remember in our Eucharist today, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for our own intentions that we mention in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, you hear the prayers of your people who come before you this day. Answer us in the name of Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands that will become for us the bread of life. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands that will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Father Almighty. May the Lord accept the sacrifice in our hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Receive, O Lord, we ask, the prayers of your people with the sacrificial offerings that through the intercession of the blessed Mary, the mother of your son, no petition may go unanswered, no request be made in vain through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation to praise your mighty deeds in the exaltation of all the saints, especially as we celebrate the memory of the Blessed Virgin Mary to proclaim your kindness as we echo her thankful hymn of praise. For truly even to her sins you have done great things, and extended your abundant mercy from age to age. When you looked on the lowliness of your handmaid, you gave us through her, the author of our salvation, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. 
To him the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. The second Eucharistic prayer. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew falls, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord, Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Salvatore, our Bishop, and all the clergy and religion. Remember also our brothers and sisters, especially Herbert Peck, who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, Blessed Grimwald, Santa Maria, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And let us share with one another a sign of that peace. Peace with you. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. A prayer for spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you in my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you are already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Let us pray. As we receive this heavenly sacrament, we beseech, O Lord, your mercy, that we who rejoice in commemorating the Blessed Virgin Mary may, by imitating her, serve worthily the mystery of our redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Our Eucharist is ended. Let us go forth in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our Mass tomorrow morning will be at 7.30 a.m. Thank you for watching.